but I'm very, very pleased and happy and proud to be back at my alma mater. And also to hear Nellis's voice, because I remember that lecture that he gave to the, uh, I forgot the level of that course, it was an introductory course, was the part of all students in the communications department at the time. I was not his TA, I was not forced to go to his class, but I did go to every lecture that he gave, and I stole that line where he says, we have a no branch plant, branch plant industry. And I added the other <coughs> one, that is, we have a hit and miss production operation in this country, which is still true. Uh, before I begin to introduce my good friend, may I ask you to join me in thanking and congratulating the faculty and the staff of the Department of Communication Studies for continuing this tradition of organizing these lectures to celebrate that as well. Now, let me now come to Professor Janet Bosco. Um, uh, personally, I feel honored to have been asked by Dr. Tao to introduce Janet Bosco. Professor Bosco taught at Temple University in the early 1980s after her PhD at the University of Illinois. And Dallas was actually a visiting professor at the time. And the other uh, troublemaker, as I would call him, was Vinnie Mosco in the same group at the same time at that university. It was a terrific moment in the history of that department and that university. It didn't last very long. They went in different directions. But uh, I did go to a conference at the time and met Dallas, and he was so thrilled to have seen an old student of his uh, who was not eating fast yet, but uh, introduced me to everybody that was there at that time. Uh, uh, several people that are quite famous in uh, the field. Um, after she, after Janet left uh, Temple University, uh, she went to the University of Oregon at the UG University, teaching there for more than 20 years now, and currently holds the ninth chair in communications. I won't tell you where the money is coming from. Um, <laughs> among her um, many, many contributions to the field, she has published numerous books and articles, something like 18 or 20 books. I can't keep track of her work, uh, her prodigious amount of activity that uh, she is known for. Every time I turn around, there's a new book on the, uh, you know, one of those book uh, sales areas of a conference. I saw one today, uh, The Black Bill Companion for Television, it's a massive book. Um, and uh, not only has she done her own work, uh, single author work, but she's also collaborated with a large number of scholars from around the world uh, to produce many anthologies and in include their work in her anthologies and other contributions that she has made. Um, I had the pre distinct pleasure of working with Janet as a co-editor of a book that we did. It was called Illuminating the Blind Spots, Essays Honoring Dallas Money. And, um, it was one of those hit and miss operations, I must say, because the publisher was going under, and we were not sure what we were going to get out. And in, in the middle of all of that trauma of getting the work out, we did produce that, I think it's a pretty, pretty good, well put together anthology of work, which is still very useful to exemplify the kind of work that uh, Dallas would have been very proud of. And in fact, what we did, and it was actually Janet's idea, to organize not only the special, but also to organize a party attached to the ICA, which was taking place in Chicago, and she managed to pull this off. I was the you know, local host committee, so to speak, in Chicago. All I did was to get the Indian food for this particular <laughs> event. But she pulled off the rest of it where you had more than 100 scholars from around the world come and celebrate Dallas's work. And we had, did we have some companies? Yes. yes, we did. Yes. And he, I remember, if I remember correctly, he didn't want to take the plane because he hated those planes. He took a train all the way from here to whatever variety of cities and ended up in one of the northern suburbs of Chicago and we went and picked him up. And he was just thrilled to have this all happen at the ICA, with, with which he had many difficulties. <laughs> it was quite an interesting situation. But I think the most important thing that I can say about Janet's work is that she's been consistently producing this body of work that exemplifies this tradition that Dallas set out to do. And we should be all very, very political, but proud of the fact that she's been doing this for over 20 years. And there's another aspect of this that you would, I'm sure, be very pleased to hear this. Not only is she a, a world well-known scholar for the work that she has done, 
but she's also a terrific teacher. I know this from the fact that I've hired some of her students. And I meet them in all the conferences. She, they, they admire her, they adore her, they uh, speak about what a great mentor she has been, not just in the classroom and for the PhD, but beyond that, as a kind of an extended family that you develop with your graduate students. Now, um, on a personal level, I met Janet when we were both graduate students. I was studying here at SFU, uh, Dallas Mike, and she was studying with one of Dallas's very uh, celebrated student, uh, Thomas Gubat, at the University of Illinois. And there was a colloquium at the University of Illinois uh, where it was a colloquium on political economy. And a, a few students were actually invited to this. And I met Eileen Meehan at the same time. And I remember going to the pizza place that was owned by Eileen's <laughs> husband at the time. And what was just amazing was that I was very nervous because you have Dallas, Herb Schiller, uh, Jim Hayes, Vinny Mosco, and several others sitting around a table, and I was asked to give a paper on Canada. And I met both of these wonderful women that you have in front of you, and I've been friends ever since, and comrades at many, many different levels. And I will give you a couple of examples of this. Um, we have worked together. I, I think one of the principal things about political economy is that it's not just a theoretical engagement. It is about practices. That's what our teachers taught us. And that you are not only engaged with the ideas and, and investigate them, but you actually are involved in public, political, and public life. That is really important to carry on that project to the next level. And as part of that, I can give you a couple of examples. Janet and I have worked together, uh, among other, many others, uh, nearly 100 people met in 1982 at Temple University at one of the churches in the basements. And we created uh, the Union for Democratic Communications, so the beginnings of that, and which is still around. A new generation, or maybe a fourth generation of political economists, are running the show. That's just a wonderful thing, how you build institutions and they continue on. On the other area in which we have actually worked very hard, and she has worked far harder than I have, in that is uh, the IACR, which is an international organization in which Dallas had heavily invested. And that's, I think I'm still doing very well, and she's had a political economy section. Now, um, I'm uh, thrilled that I was asked to do this. I give you my friend and comrade, Janet Boston. 